Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a Reading Horizons video. It's Friday, I don't normally do a video on a Friday but I did say I was going to film more by whim this year and I've had my first week back at work today in all its different forms it's been a bit bonkers so that's why this video is delayed but I did want to do one before my next vlog goes live which will be on Sunday. For Sunday it's vlogging day. Anyway, what is a Reading Horizons video? you may well be asking. It's something that I used to do on a podcast called The Readers with both Gavin and Thomas, my co-hosts, and that's where we talk about what we had read, what we were reading, and what we were thinking about reading next. And I thought I would also talk about the January Savage prompt for January. For me and my mum are doing uh, 12 prompts this year that lots of you lovely lot picked for us. And yeah, there's a video of Mum's uh, on Mum's channel where she goes through all of the 12. I will, in fact, no, there's 13 because there's a bonus one. I'll link that down below so you can find out more. But we'll talk about January's shortly um, because what I read next is going to be inspired by it. As I realised, there were two ways you could do January's prompt after I saw Mum's video about it just the other day. Anyway, get ahead of myself. Let's get to what I wanted us to talk about first, which is... Reading Horizons. So yeah, like I said, what I have just read, what I'm currently reading and what I'm planning on next. So the book that I have just read, if I pop them there, can you see the covers? Is that too easy for everyone? Yeah, it kind of is. I think I need, I've had a bit of a move around of stuff in the library and got lamps, which has made such a difference. But um, yeah, it doesn't mean that I can do sort of like a secretive reveal. So I'm going to lean slightly that way to the other chair and get some of that golden light, which is also making me look very red and flushed, which I do often for, I have Durkham's, which is a chronic illness that makes you flush quite a lot, but I'm not currently having one of those now. Anyway, so what am, or what, sorry, what is the book that I have just read? Well, it is The Other Half by Charlotte Vassell, which is out next week, but I'm doing an event with Charlotte in West Kirby Books on the Wirral in West Kirby. The name of the bookshop gives it away, um, which is a new independent bookshop. And uh, Charlotte is having a launch there where I'll be chatting to her about this uh, tomorrow as this goes live. So if you're around the area, check out West Kirby Books on Instagram. And if you want to get a ticket, get a ticket. It'd be lovely to see you there. I think I'm already going to be seeing some of you there, which is very exciting because you're on the ball. And if you want to know about more events and stuff that I am doing on the off chance that you want to come to them or if they're online or whatever, then do check out my Instagram because I tend to update that. I am going to iron about whether I need to get a website or not, but that's a whole other thing. What's this book about? Well, this book, I have to say from the cover, I wasn't sure it was going to 100% be for me, but I really wanted to support a debut author and the bookshop because it's a new indie. However, after the first chapter, I was absolutely hooked. It starts off in a McDonald's in London, where on the first floor, there is a party for basically the uber rich. So you go through the downstairs at McDonald's and then go off up into this ridiculous champagne coke fueled, not the coke that they do at the Tills and McDonald's uh, party. And we get to meet these kind of odious characters. We know, however, already that one of them is either already dead or is going to die. And you find out afterwards that actually they died. They didn't end up at the party. And then obviously there's a murder mystery to solve. Who would want her dead? And it goes from there. And Honestly, as soon as the the first chapter I was a bit tentative about, but as soon as we got into the mindset of the detective, Detective Beauchamp, we just, there's something about him that is so readable. It still remains like serious about what it's looking at in terms of murder. It doesn't try and make it comedy or farcical. Are they the same thing? It just has this sort of life about it. And I did compare it earlier this very day to some of Kate Atkinson's Jackson Brody writing. It's not like, it's not the same, but it has sort of fizzes and sparks of that, if you know what I mean. I definitely think Charlotte Bussell is going to be an author to watch. It also looks at art history, it looks at the publishing world, it looks at class, it looks at race. Lots of stuff about names in here, which I'm really looking forward to talking to Charlotte about. Yeah, 
really, really, really good crime. And I have not read enough crime over the last year or two. And I love a crime novel. And this has reminded me that I must head to more. So yeah, I would recommend this if crime is your thing. And like I said, give it a couple of chapters. You'll literally be hooked in from Detective Busham. It, it's just, there's, he's not like other detectives either in so many ways. I, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. So I'm being really careful. How I'm going to talk about a crime novel for 50 minutes tomorrow and not include any spoilers is going to be an early 2023 challenge. So that's what I've just read. What I am currently reading is Daisy Jones and the Sick. I'm actually reading, I think it's put off the wrong pile. I'm actually reading this. Uh, well, I'm reading that edition, but this is the edition that I'm going to be keeping. I really love the American editions of Taylor Jenkins Reads books. Now, I have had so much else quite a while. Loads of people have told me that I would love Taylor Jenkins Reads before I did an event with her last year for Carrie Soto is Back, which I read for the event, obviously, and really, 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 really loved. And I love Taylor's a bit too. This, I think, is absolute genius. The first time I picked it up, I think it was a couple of years ago, I looked and saw that it was almost like script because you kind of have the characters. Um, I mean, loads of you have read it, so it feels a bit like redundant to show you this, but you can see it's sort of done through different um, people speaking. And I wasn't sure that was going to work. It absolutely does. And I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is a genius for that because that's really, really, really hard to pull off. And I just think the way that through the different conversations that I had and seeing them from different people's perspectives, builds a really true version of a different character because of how they're perceived by everybody and because of the motivations or prejudices or presumptions that people have made around them. It follows a band called The Six as they become quite well known. They then do a duet with Daisy who are also getting to know. And from there, it's kind of just like rock royalty. That's where I've got to. I haven't got much further. I was completely influenced into reading this by my friend Tess, who I also work with, who I sent a signed copy of Malibu Rising, because I had a quote with me inside, and I thought, oh, that'd be a nice thing to send someone, which is also, I've just realised, slightly egotistical, but I thought she'd really like uh, Taylor's writing anyway. And um, I sent a copy of Malibu Rising. She absolutely loved it. And then got Daisy Jones out from the library and was like, Simon, it's great. You really, really need to read it. And because I was seeing her on yesterday, was it yesterday? I, I'm losing my days already because it's been one of those days that's been a bit, it's been one of those weeks where after having not worked for quite a while, I had suddenly was on everything and got confused. Anyway, because we were catching up, I thought, I'm going to start that. And I read it on the train, started reading it on, I didn't read it all. I started reading it on the train to Birmingham because we were meeting in Birmingham for a team away day, which included escape rooms, which I, well, we all failed at and I was devastated by, frankly. We all got nuked. Awful. Anyway, I picked it up on the train down and absolutely could not put it down. There's something like, I don't know, the way she writes is like literary crack, frankly, and I just couldn't stop reading. I was quite cross when I got to Birmingham and that I had to spend a day seeing everyone, even though it was lovely to see all of my colleagues again because I had for ages. And then promptly, as soon as I got back on the train, it was the same until I got home and then was quite grumpy that I didn't have an excuse to keep reading, but I was quite tired, so I went to bed. Anyway, yeah, so um, I'm really, 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 really enjoying this. And I feel like I just, I'm going to have to at some point read every single thing that Taylor Jenkins Reid has written. Yeah, I just think it's fab. Also, the TV show is coming soon, which I think was another reason that made me think, oh, I should read that before that happens, because I like to read any adaptations before I see them. So we have that one. Now, on to what I might read next, which links in to January's Savage Prompt. As I mentioned, my mum and I have been given 13 prompts from lots of you lovely lot, and we are having a prompt a month and read along. And if you would like to join in, that would be fantastic. Like I said, I'll link to the video uh, that me and mum did for her channel about the prompts. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, I've saved the prompts as a highlight so that you can get to it quickly. The prompt for January is to read a book that has been blurbed by one of your favourite authors or a book blurred by favourite author. Now, I thought we were doing it in a way that I it was quite tricky, where it's a quote by a favourite author of yours on a book that you haven't read yet. Could be an author you've not read before, could be an author you have, but it's got to be a quote 
from a favourite author. So when I was sorting out putting my 2023 shelves in order of publication, because that's how I keep the books on those shelves, I found The New Life by Tom Crew, which has a quote on the cover from Kate Atkinson, who says, a very fine new writer, and she is one of my very, very, very favourite authors. And so I was like, oh, that's what's going to be my pick for that prompt in January. However, I then saw Mum's latest video about January prompts, and I'll link her channel actually, because then you can find both of those videos, uh, the prompts and her talking about reading her January prompt, or almost finishing her January prompt. And she had found, gone a different way and got a favourite book and chosen a quote by an author from that and then gone off to read that author. I won't spoil it and say what it was. So I was like, oh gosh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. And then I thought I could be really smug and do it like, so I do both and then I get it right either way. Um, and so I was going through my favourite books of 2022 and one of them um, was Natalie Haynes, Stone Blind. And on the back is a quote from, guess who? Kate Atkinson saying Natalie Haynes is both a witty and erudite guide. She wears her extensive learning lightly and definitely drags the classics into the modern world, which is pretty much exactly what I think about Natalie's writing. So what I think I'm going to read next is Kate Atkinson's Shrines of Gaiety, which I meant to read at the end of last year. She is one of my absolute favourite authors to the point where when a new book comes out, I almost... Like, I'm so excited for it, but I also then save it for a rainy day and don't read them for ages, which is just daft. I mean, why have I not read the latest Jackson Brody, Big Sky, that came out several years ago that I was so excited for? I know he said Pam was excited for, but that seems extreme. But I was so excited for, it was untrue. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to not do that. I'm going to head to this one. I also think this could be eligible. Well, it is eligible, so it could be up for the Women's Prize 2023. Um, so yeah, so that is what I'm going to read next. But if you're joining in with the prompts, they are all on Storygraph. If you're part of Storygraph, you can find them that way. But I think either works. So you can either choose a book that you've not read yet by an author you might not have read or whatever that has a quote on by your favourite author or you can head to one of your favourite books and then go and find a book by an author quoted on the cover. So that's kind of, I don't know, what do we call this chain of, well, I guess it's a chain of books because it's not quite phone, uh, telephone, what was it? Oh, was it telephone blurb? Blurb Telephone, sorry, that lovely Julie of Linen Library did, which I really want to do, which would be, for example, if you'd read that, you'd then head to a Kate Atkinson book and then choose a quote from her. Although, one thing I did notice when I was going through my favourite books, there's a lot of books that come out that don't either don't have any quotes at all, because maybe they don't need to, because Kate Atkinson, she doesn't need a quote, the world knows she's amazing. Or it could be that they're just from newspapers. And let's be honest, I love The Guardian, but I'm not going to go off and read an entire copy of The Guardian after reading this, um, which makes the game a little bit tricky. And also, like, yeah. So I could start with this one, for example, and then go to Kate Atkinson. And, but again, then I would be stopped. So anyway, it's something else. A book chain, I don't know. A book tryst. A tryst, because there's three. Is it, is three a tryst? I feel like it is a triptych, a tryst, whatever. I'm just waffling on right now. But um, suffice to say, that is my, sorry. Oh, I'll show you what the other books were, just because random, because they were down here. So I had the other edition of Taylor um, Jenkins Reads, Daisy and the Six, because that's the one I'm reading from. But spookily, um, I was looking through books I've acquired recently, because I bought this gorgeous signed edition of Black Cake in the foil sale with... Oh, those spreadsheets, somebody stop them, no, don't. Um, and on the quote is, a, uh, on the quote, and on the cover is a quote from Taylor Jenkins Reid saying that Charmaine Wilkerson's Black Cake is a story as meaningful as it is delicious. It turns delightfully juicy and then stunningly wise. Black Cake is a winner. So I'm definitely gonna head to this one soon. Um, and then other ones I had were The Night Ship by Jess Kidd, which did, in proof form, have a quote from me. But I think they've been me off in favour of, well, Graham Norton, Mary Costello, V.E. Schwalb and Alex Preston, who can blame them. But Graham Norton could have been one that I jumped onto. I could have jumped onto Graham Norton because of Jess Kidd. Let's just leave that as, as, as 
meant to be, clearly. Um, moving on. Or um, on Elizabeth Strout's Lucy by the Sea, there's a quote from Hilary Mantel, and I would like to get to more of Hilary Mantel's book. So, yeah, anyway, that's all the books. But the ones that I'm going to um, hold up again are my reading horizon. So I would love you to tell me in the comments down below, A, um, what your reading horizons are. So what have you read? What's the last book that you read? What are you currently reading? And what are you probably going to read next? I pop that probably in there because it's very important. I'd also love, 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 love and that. I'd also love to know what you know. <laughs> Just done that. What your reading horizons are. And also, sorry, it's because it's the lights going. I'm trying to get everything all out, all the info to you as fast as I can. Um, yeah, I'd also love to know if you're joining in with the Savage Reading Prompts and what your January prompt pick is. I seem to have two, because I've got that one and I've got that one. So I think I'll be reading them both in January so they can both count. Look at me being an absolute swap with my prompts. Um, I hope you've got lovely weekends ahead. As I said, I'll be doing the event with Charlotte tomorrow. Before that, I'll have to go and see Megan tonight and then go for some fabulous Italian sourdough pizza at Rudy's. And then Sunday, I think it's going to be a pretty chill day. I am really excited about Megan though. Um, anyway, I'm going to go. I will speak to you all soon. I hope you're doing super duper well. Let me know your reading horizons. Let me know if you're joining in with the Savage Prompts and if so, what your January prompt pick is. And see you all later. Bye.